I am Laura Federico. I'm a science lab teacher for third, fourth, and fifth grade in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And this is my lab uh, that I do with my fifth graders when we study World War II. Um, we do a lesson on the periodic table, just a brief introduction, and the role that Oak Ridge, Tennessee played in the Manhattan Project. We start the lab by just taking a look at the periodic table and how it's arranged with one here, two over here, and talk about how the atoms uh, as they go up in size, the atomic number increases, so the atoms appear larger than the atoms that we start with. Uh, just very brief introduction. Um, and then I give them a lab sheet where they have to look for uh, three elements named after planets because we're going to talk about uranium and plutonium, so I definitely want them to look for those. Um, and then just for fun, two elements named after places, three elements for which the symbol doesn't match the name, and then they're going to write their name using the periodic table just to have them look around for fun. Um, so I show them that my name, Laura, is number 57, uh, lanthanum I think, 92 uranium and 88 radium. Take about uh, 20 minutes to do this. Um, and then I have them answer the question the periodic table is like. Um, and some will say an alphabet because you can mix things together different ways and get different um, meanings. Her, uh, compounds that do different things. Um, or it's like a pantry full of ingredients. You could take the same five ingredients and make different things with it. You could make bread or cake uh, if you had the right ingredients. Um, uh, this year, several kids said that uh, the periodic table is like Minecraft. Uh, it's a video game and um, because you take things in the game and you combine two things to get a third thing which is um, somehow related. Uh, the example one kid gave was if you put a pumpkin and a torch, pumpkin plus torch equals jack-o'-lantern. Um, and you can create a jack-o'-lantern uh, if you have those raw ingredients. So I thought that was pretty good. Um, so and each table is given a cup of uranium uh, straight out of the ground, which of course is just sand. Um, and they figure that out right away. Although a few say, really? Um, and we talk about the fact that grains of sand are much larger than atoms, but pretend that each grain of sand is a uranium atom. Most of the uranium that comes out of the ground is uranium-238. And we've already looked at uranium on the periodic table. We saw that its atomic mass was 238. Um, but the uranium that was they were isolating in um, Oak Ridge was uranium-235. So just to prove that it's there, I sprinkle colored sand on top, and I have a lot of these um, timers from some math unit that somebody was getting rid of, so I just break them open and dump the sand out. So again, it's still sand, but it's slightly different. It's pink. Um, and so then they have to mix that in. So uh, I tell them this is what came out of the ground. It is less than 1% the pink sand, um, but that's what we have to get out. So once I've sprinkled it on top, I've told them the difference, they mix it in, and then I say, okay, now separate the pink sand. Separate the uranium-235. And they <laughs> look at me like, how in the world could we do that? Um, and they try several different methods. I've had kids rub, uh, ask for a balloon and rub it on their head and try to get it out that way. Um, they've asked for sieves and coffee filters. They pick through it with magnifying glasses and pencils, uh, which is usually the way it works. And then we discuss the fact that at Oak Ridge, they tried several different ways. Um, to extract the uranium-235 isotope. And I do throw in the word isotope, although it's certainly not a fifth grade standard. Um, it, I think it doesn't hurt them to have heard that word. The purpose of the town of Oak Ridge was to create a facility to separate the uranium-235 atoms that they needed for the nuclear weapons from the regular uranium-238. And this was a billboard found outside the gates to the facility of Oak Ridge um, instructing employees to keep everything secret. Uh, the town started with a population of around 3,000, and within three years there were 75,000 people living there. There's a great map of places around the country that were somehow involved in the Manhattan Project, either mining uranium or developing the aircraft to carry it or uh, isolating the uranium isotopes or plutonium. Um, so, and you can click on each one and it will tell you a little bit about those places. Uh, the website for Oak Ridge, the Wikipedia page for Oak Ridge, uh, goes through the population of the town, things that were built, people coming and going from work. Uh, 
and again the Manhattan Project. Uh, it talks about uh, when they are trying to separate their uranium-235 atoms, which is the pink sand. Um, they keep saying, how do we do this? And uh, at Oak Ridge, we actually tried three different methods. There was a Y, um, from what I understand in my reading, there was a uh, the K-25 plant, the Y-12, and the S-50, and they all had different, um, they were all trying different methods to separate the uranium to see which one worked out the best. There is a, there's a great museum in Oak Ridge, the American Museum of Science and Energy, um, and they have a link to the photos of Ed Westcott. He was the, from what I understand, the only person allowed to have a camera in public within the fence um, at Oak Ridge during the, the war. Um, and so he's taken pictures at the post office or uh, pictures of pe the housing or the grocery store, or people getting their hair done. So just every photos from everyday life of these people who were not allowed to have cameras to take pictures um, in their town, the, this sudden town that they had been built that they lived in. Um, so that's just a, a, a very interesting um, way for people to live uh, and for students to see that. So you can click on the link to the photos of Ed Westcott from the museum's website. And there are wonderful photographs. In the final part of this lesson, we discussed the fact that these were fission bombs. They were large atoms that split, and that released energy. So I mix up a batch of salt dough, and I give the kids each a, a fist-sized ball of this dough. So here is our uranium atom, and when I count down with the kids, they are going to split it. Every kid has a piece about this size, about as big as your fist. and. We've just finished pulling out the uranium, so this is their uranium atom. And we are going to split it when I count down from three. Uh, but I never count straight down. I'll say three, two, now where was the place they separated this? And they all yell, Oak Ridge. And then we count down again, three, two. What was the name of that project that was focused on uh, making nu nuclear bombs? Manhattan Project. Three, two, what isotope is this? And we go on like that a few times just to build the suspense. And then finally we count down three, two, one, boom, and split the atom. After we have demonstrated fusion with our big atom, then I have them take two very small pieces. These are hydrogen atoms. And once again we go three, two, now where does this occur? On the sun. Three, two, what are these two atoms? Hydrogen, and so on, until finally three, two, one, Boom! Even louder than we did before. And that's fusion. And both give off energy. For other hands-on elementary science lessons and science social studies combination lessons, please uh, check out other videos on my YouTube channel, NPMM Science. Thanks.